on the edge of a prehistoric forest, a once-a-year event is in play. Gathering together in huge numbers for a common purpose is a congregation of Saltosaurus. These 10-meter-long titanosaurs are larger than any modern land animal, but at 6 tons, they are small for sauropods. This time of year, females gather to lay their eggs. Each one digs out a small area and lays over a dozen eggs over a few days. While many sauropods bury and then abandon their clutches, Saltosaurus will stay and watch over their vulnerable eggs for a short while. They would stay longer, but these huge animals need to be eating almost constantly. With so many of them in one place, there isn't enough food to support them indefinitely. Once the plants within the local vicinity have run out, the females will have to leave their eggs. Though with the sheer amount of them, many will actually survive their isolation. It also helps that they are 12 centimeters long, a little too large for many egg thieves, like tiny mammals. The females spend their day feeding, and then returning to the nesting sites to lay their eggs. With so many large bodies, there is a lot of traffic all the time, but it is rare that any of the eggs get damaged by the adults, as all are aware that to do so may enact the wrath of a vengeful mother. With so many large and protective females present, it may seem foolish for predators to even be present, but some are. In the underbrush, lays Aquilmere's saurus. At 5.3 meters long, he is far too small to tackle even a single Saltosaurus. He should also only have to wait a few weeks before the nesting grounds become much safer to hunt on, but he is starving, and needs an easy meal to make it through the next few days. He has been watching the Saltosaurus come and go for over an hour, and knows the nests at the edge are more vulnerable, but he has to get in and out without being trampled to death. Finally, he sees an opening, and rises to his feet. He knows he can't sneak in, so bolts towards the nearest nest as fast as he can. An alarm call sounds off before he reaches his objective, but still, he makes it to the nest and tries to chomp down as many eggs as possible. Most break in his teeth, causing half of their content to spill on the ground, but he still manages to swallow over half a dozen before one of the Saltosaurus gets within range and whips her tail at him. The attack strikes across the predator's jaw, breaking some of his teeth. Now the predator knows that he has stayed too long. He turns around and bolts back to the forest. Tails attempting to whip him, and the Saltosaurus facing him even attempt to bite the small hunter. One of the sauropods is too close to get away from, and the large herbivore batters its long neck against the Quilmesaurus. The predator is airborne for a second, before crashing onto the ground, breaking several ribs. Rising to his feet, the hunter moves as fast as he can, knowing that far worse awaits if the Saltosaurus catch him. As the intruder hobbles away, the herbivores calm down slightly. They know that others will try and raid their nests, and so must stay on high alert. Before each mother leaves, she will cover her nest in leaves and branches, and try and hide it, but this does little in the long run, and many of the nests on the outer perimeter will fall victim to predators that know when to attack. Despite this, thousands of sauropodlets will hatch in a few weeks' time and venture into the nearby forests, beginning a long life of eating and growing. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the armoured sauropods, Saltosaurus. Saltosaurus was originally discovered in 1975 in Argentina. Its name is derived from the Salta province, the region it was found in northwest Argentina. Fossils of up to five individuals have been found, including adults and juveniles. Saltosaurus was a sauropod belonging to the Titanosaur family. In life, it grew up to 10 meters long and stood 3.5 meters tall. Weight has been variable, ranging between 2.5 tons and 10 tons, with 5 to 6 tons being the average. Saltosaurus is most well known for the armoured osteoderms that run along its back. There are two types of these bony plates, oval ones that are up to 12 centimetres wide and were arranged in longitudinal rows along the back, and small round ossicles, about 7 millimetres wide, that formed continuous armour around the plates. Saltosaurus was the first sauropod to be discovered with any kind of armour plating, 
and was quite a profound discovery, as it's usually assumed that sauropods relied on their huge size as a deterrent from predators. Evidently, Saltosaurus needed this armour for extra protection, after all, despite being 10 metres long. For a titanosaur, it is quite small, with other members of its family like Patagona Titan and Argentinosaurus being some of the largest land animals ever to walk the earth. Its neck was quite short as well. It didn't have less vertebra, but the vertebrae were shortened and they had larger chambers for air sacs as well. The legs were short and stubby, with especially short hands and feet, which helped to support a huge gut. So why was it so much smaller than its huge relatives? It could be that its environment couldn't support larger animals, and it evolved so it didn't need so many resources. It could also be that there were other large sauropods living alongside it, and it simply fit into a niche of middle browser, while others were high browsers. This may have necessitated the need for armour, so that it could better defend itself from predators. A large nesting site has been discovered in Patagonia that contains nests that were dug up by Saltosaurus females, which would lay up to 25 eggs in each, each egg being around 12 centimetres long. We know they were Saltosaurus eggs, as they contain fossilised embryos that have armour-like scales very similar to the adults. This is an incredible find, as it also helps to shed light on sauropod nesting behaviour. Saltosaurus lived around 70 million years ago. At that time, most sauropods had disappeared from the northern continents, whereas in the southern continents, like South America and Australia, these giants were still going strong, and continued right to the end of the age of dinosaurs. So, Saltosaurus is a bit of an odd species, but its adaptations make sense, and show that different families of dinosaur could evolve similar physical traits in order to survive. But what do you think of Saltosaurus? Do you think that having a mix of size and armour is a good adaptation? Or would you go all out in just one of those options? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.